couple of days ago, she told me that um, um, that she wanted me to help her uh, with a tenant on a property. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start how I always do and just talk about how the call came in uh, to her. So I'm just making sure I'm recording and we should be good. Okay. So, um, so the call came into this agent and it was a op city lead. So uh, when the call came in, and let's just say it was me, uh, the way she did it is the way I trained her. She goes, Hey, this, you know, this is Doug with um, DHS Realty. Hey, this is op city. We have uh, Susie Smith on the other line. She wants to look at 1121 Independence Trail. Uh, she's a tenant and she's in a month to month lease and uh, we're going to get off the phone. You'll have a great day. And then I told her that her number one job was to set the appointment. And so what she said is absolutely. Um, hey, Susie, um, 1121 uh, 1, 2, 1 Independence, when do you want to look at it? And she goes, oh, how about this evening? So they had it set up for 6 p.m. tonight. Um, so the first thing that she had to do was uh, while she was on the phone is get the agent's uh, phone number. And uh, I mean, or the 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 um, the tenant's phone number. And um, I always when I get the number, I always want to make sure that they text. So I would say, hey, is this your cell phone? Yeah, it is. OK, do you text? Yeah, I do. OK, cool. And then what's your email? Susie at Susie Smith dot com. All right. Well, I'll see you tonight um, at 6 p.m. at 1121 Independence. Um, and then I would always say one more thing before I get you off the phone. Give me your realtor's name so I can protect them in case you like the house tonight. I don't want to take a commission from your realtor. And um, at that point, hopefully the uh, tenant says, I don't have a realtor. And that's when you go, oh, okay, well, I'll see you tonight. Now, of course, if they had a realtor, you would want to follow up and go, um, well, where is your realtor? Oh, well, they're on vacation in Cancun. Oh, well, shit, I'd like to be in Cancun also, but I won't be working with you because if I go show you tonight and you like the home, it's going to, you're going to probably wait for your friend to come back from Cancun. So that'll be a decision that you'll have to make on whether you want to cut bait or you could follow up. And I know that Dave Wilson, some other agents would say something like, Oh, have you signed anything? Oh no, I haven't signed anything. I mean, I just talked to an agent last week. Oh, okay. Well, if you haven't signed anything, I'd love to earn your business and I'll see you tonight. And then you've got to decide whether it's a risk for you to go meet them tonight or not meet them. Does that make sense? Um, and so I would then get off the phone and pull over and I want to make sure that this home is still available. So I'm going to go into MLS and uh, our MLS is matrix.netris.net. <laughs> so you'll see up here uh, once it logs in, but, but I will show you that, you know, this is the website that I've told y'all you should, in my opinion, you should put on your, uh, on your phone and you save it as a, as a website and it's matrix.netris.net. So once you log in, uh, you're going to get these 14 boxes. And I always like to say it like that. There's seven on top of seven. And once you get the seven on top of seven, you hit the left-hand corner. It says Matrix Netris. And then this screen opens up. And this screen opens up because we've kind of simplified it for training purposes. And everybody has basically, with some exceptions, the same screen. You can always add things to it. But I, when I say I've cleaned up your MLS, it's so that whenever I'm talking to you, I know that when you log in, these are your three screens. So the first thing I would do, knowing that I have the address that Op City has sent me, I want to do, I want to find it as quick as possible. And all I'm going to do in this middle box, I'm going to go right here and go 1121. And then the street is independence. And let's just say that I don't know how to spell uh, independence, but I know it starts with an I-N. That's all I need. So I-N or just an I would be good enough. You hit enter and it's going to go back to 2003 and it's going to pull up any homes that start with 1121 independence. Okay. And you can see that it's the second one down. Now, if this was real life, this property's pending. And so I'm not even going to waste my time showing it tonight. Uh, but for training purposes, we're going to act like right there it says active. And so the first thing I would do is I would click on the MLS number and I would print it. And that's what I did here. So that's the agent full report. And that's what that is right there. On here, it's gonna show me things like square footage and the age, but more importantly, the second page, which is down here, that's gonna be the agent. And that's the number for me to text the agent to see if it's still available. Because again, when I pulled it up, we're gonna act like it said active, not pending. So I called this morning and it was available. It's already pending. 
but I just text the agent about an hour ago and they didn't reply back. And that's always kind of a gut feeling that something's not, that it's not available anymore. So then I called the agent literally like 20 minutes ago and they said they got an app on it earlier this morning. All right. But that's how you would always find out. Cause you don't want to show this buyer tenant tonight. If the home is not available, a lot of people want to know where does it show what you get paid on a lease? And it's going to be right here. It says BAC 25%. BAC stands for buyer agent commission. And on a sale, it's usually going to say 3% there. 25% means 25% of that price. So what's that, 500 bucks or something like that? I can't even do math well. Is that 450? <laughs> I think it is. All right. But here's the news. If it was four hundred fifty dollars, there's only fifty bucks that comes out. So that's at our company, only fifty dollars comes out for leases. So again, what you're trying to do is work this lead because they could have turned into a buyer. And so basically, you you know you're going to make four hundred fifty bucks. Uh, for uh, fifty dollars comes out. Uh, there's no splits, and and then you pour into them over the course of a year and try to get them with a lender that's going to help them on a credit uh, issue, uh, and they become a buyer. I mean, that's the whole goal of real estate is to build relationships. I don't even want to work with these people if they hate me. And this is going to be the only transaction because then I kind of did lose money. And so I'm going to tell them and remind them like, hey, just, you know, Laura, like I normally get 50 percent of the first month's rent. And on this one, I'm getting, you know, 25 percent. And I've, I've shown you about, you know, 10 homes. I've already spent this money in gas with gas at eight dollars a, a gallon. Uh, and and so she kind of laughs and I go, but I just want you to know, like, you know, I want you, I, I want you for all your real estate needs. And I want your family and your friends and your kids and your teenagers when they go into apartments. I mean, I want to help them for all of your real. And that's really your goal. Your goal is to find them on social media, befriend them, and then don't put stupid crap on Facebook about what the Supreme Court's going to rule later today or this week. Just make it about real estate because nobody, people want to get away from that craziness on TV and want to have an enjoyable experience buying a home. Um, or renting one. Okay. Um, all right. So I've texted this agent, let's just say hypothetically. And he goes, yes, it's available. Um, the next thing I need to do is scroll to the bottom of it. And it's going to say how to make an appointment. And it says to call the agent. And I, I text. So I texted this agent, Hey, I'd like to show your home tonight, 6 PM. And then I'm waiting for a response right here. It says, please contact showing time. And I did that this morning as part of my training for y'all. And showing time says, we don't even have the property. You need to text the agent. So this is an agent that has conflicting information where it is to make an appointment. So instead of texting me and going, hey, what do I do? Just act like I was dead or you were a Marine. You figure it out. And what you would do is you go, damn it, I'm going to first text the agent and then I'm going to call CSS. Mm -hmm. And by God, one of those two is going to have an answer for me. Um, and, and that's what happened is I, I first called CSS cause it said that, and they said, you need to contact the agent. We don't have the property. And then I called the agent and he said that it, it, it got a lease on it, but we're going to act like it's still available. All right. So I made the appointment. And then what I do is I always bring the agent full report and I always bring the tax roll, even on a lease. Cause I just want to know that if they like it. I, I just want to know that I have some information about who the landlord is. And then before I go meet them, I want to do a CMA of, of rentals. And so what I, what I like to do is I like to copy and paste the subdivision, which is right there. And this is just the way I do it. I'm going to go up here to, um, and then I always want to know the city and everything. I'm going to go up here to search and I'm going to go down to residential lease. <clears throat> and it's going to uh, bring me into our residential lease search for a buyer. Because if you can see on the left, it says active only. But what I want to do is a CMA of lease properties. So I'm going to skip coming soon and I'm going to mark these next three. I'm going to miss canceled and expired. I'm going to pick pending and closed. I'm going to change it to go back 180 days. And then I'm going to go to subdivision and I'm going to paste it. Now, I didn't complete the whole subdivision name, but if I hit the shift and eight key, that asterisk basically wildcards that name. So any subdivision with trail woo will pull up. 
but that might be a pretty common subdivision name. So then I want to go over to the city and make sure that I get the right city. So as soon as I typed in Grand PR, I then need to click Grand Prairie and you can see that 11 went to nine. And then I'm gonna hit results. And when I hit results, I'm gonna get a single list of all the properties. And I want this quick CMA right here to be highlighted. So all I'm gonna do is check mark above the one. I'm gonna hit quick CMA. And um, do you have a, oh, okay. I wanna make sure everybody has a chair if they need it. And then what's gonna happen is a CMA is gonna print. Uh, and that's super cool because you don't really have to do a whole lot. You just print and it's just it's just some more information that you can give to the client because what you're trying to do is you're trying to lead with value when you meet them. So um, I would make sure I know where the property's at. And if I was going to meet them at 6 p.m., I would meet them. I'd be there about 530 because I get places really early. Um, I'd be out front. I've already left them a couple video messages. I've sent them my electronic business card through Popple, and I've tried to find them on social media. So basically, when Laura pulls up behind me, I'm going to have everything like this. And I, I basically would be wearing what I'm wearing now. Blue jeans is fine, some khaki shorts. It's summer. I mean, you're going to sweat your ass off if you dress in a suit and a cowboy hat. So just, you know, you don't, it, it, it everybody's different. I mean, I know Dave dresses like he does now. And Dave's one of our top producers. So day, every, every everybody's day. different. You just, you fit your own personality. So I get out of the car and I swear to God, it'd be something like this. I'd be, hey, I'm Doug with uh, DHS Really. It's nice to meet you. Just a little packing on myself and uh, let's go look at the house. And so as we're walking up, I'm going to say um, what the backyard faces because I care about that even if it's a lease because I know that it's about to get really hot in the next few months. And so I want him to have a comfortable time when he leases the house for a year. So as we're walking up, I'm going to go, hey, just so you know, Muhammad, the backyard faces due east. So there'll be a lot of shade in the summer. And he'll say, most likely, I've never heard that before. And I'll say, well, we have a lot of sun in the summer and we have a southeasterly breeze. And so you want the backyard to have some eastern exposure. And he goes, my God, I've never heard that before. I'm from California. We love the sun. And I go, yeah, well, in California, you want your backyard to face west because it's facing an ocean. And when the sun sets on the ocean, there's an automatic breeze. But we don't have that ocean here. So then when we walk in the house, uh, I'm going to say, this is a graphic on the property. You know, you can take a look at that. And uh, he might say, what do you think about the price? And I'll say, well, this is CMA. And I give him this. I'm not afraid to give out information to somebody. I, I want to lead with trust. And I want to believe that he's going to want to work with me. Hey, Casey, Casey just passed her test today. Or not, but got her license today. Um, so, uh, so anyways, I would leave it with him. And uh, I might see the garage and see the sprinkler on the wall. And I might also tell him that, hey, it's got a sprinkler. So, you know, that's good. And he might say, why well, don't, I don't, I'm a land, I'm a tenant. I don't want to water the lawn. And you go, well, it's not really to water the lawn. It's because we have a lot of clay and caliche in the soil. And I'll also do this. In Texas, our house moves. So we just want it to move together. And that's why we have a sprinkler in the garage. So most likely part of the lease conditions will be that you need to water your foundation every three days, usually in the evening. Um, so I'm going to give him that. And then he might look at me and say, I really like the house. What would be the next step? That's when I'm going to text the agent again to make sure it's still available because I texted the agent before I showed it, but they could have got a lease app on it while I was showing it. So the only way that you know that home is available, whether it's a buy or a lease is to text the agent whose name is in the, in the, in the, on the sign. All right. So I'll, I'll tell them, I'll say, hey, why don't you give me about 40 minutes and I'll start sending you some documents. Let me do some checking to make sure it's still available. And then I'll say, hey, if you have a second, let me just show you this packet. And then what I do, and I'm, this is just kind of what I've always done. This is my originals. And I have the title company make me 10 copies and I get them stapled. I put them in the back of my car. I mean, they're not like anything special. It says generically tax guide on the front. When you open it, it's got uh, a resume. Um, it's got a bio. And uh, my son, he's 20, and um, I did a little bio for him. He got in some trouble in high school and went to like a, a, a camp to rehab some, some uh, drug use. And uh, I, he knows that I, I use this as an example for some people in here because not that y'all have drug use, but that you might not have a history of being in real estate, but you do have to have something that establishes a rapport with people instead of just a, a packet that has nothing about you. So I did this one night for five minutes. It just says, 
Mitchell Gardner grew up in the North Dallas area with real estate as a backdrop to his years in high school. He absorbed the DFW real estate market by listening and watching his stepdad of 13 years work with buyers, sellers, landlords, and tenants. After graduating high school in 2020, Mitchell was accepted into Texas Tech University. As much as college was an option, Mitchell was drawn to the real estate industry. So after high school, Mitch traveled to Arkansas and Louisiana working in the residential industry construction side. He always yearned to get back into real estate and he got his license and joined his step to blah, blah, blah. What it didn't say is that he was doing construction part of a rehab camp. <laughs> so you've got to paint your story. You own it. It's not anybody else's. Don't lie. But, you know, um, but again, the whole goal is that when I give Muhammad this and I already talked to him, I asked him what he did in high school. Uh, he said he started a chess club and uh, I play chess. And now I don't have in here that I play chess, but you should. Because if I opened it and I just watched the Queens game or whatever that was uh, that was on Netflix a few months ago, yeah, yeah, I would say, oh my God, I watched the Queens game. Is that what it's called? Queens yeah. Gambit. Yeah, Queens Gambit. And I was like, that was crazy. And I mean, just like that, I'm going to be his agent. Yeah. Just that one comment like that. Um, so, anyways, all right. So now um, I go back to whatever you're comfortable with. I do everything on my phone, but you can go back to your house, you can go to any place with Wi Fi. Your phone doesn't even need Wi-Fi to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it on the computer. So the first thing I need to do is most likely when I come back to my house, I need to go back in the MLS. And um, when I go back in the MLS, of course, the screen will be, uh, you know, it won't be where I was in the beginning when I just printed what I printed. So I just want to do one more, like this will be the screen that opens up. And your goal is you want to print that um, agent full report. So again, you're going to already have the address and you're going to go one more time. And this is just to make sure everybody understands how friggin' simple this is. 1121 is a street number. All I know is independence starts with an I. I hit enter and it's going to pull up everything from 2003 to today that starts with the 1121 uh, and an I. There it is. And again, all you do is click on the MLS number. That's called the agent full report right above it. The picture, you see this tab, it says tax, you click on it, that's the tax roll. You go back to the listing page and this clock right here, if you ever click on it, that's the history of the home since 2003. And so I always do that no matter what, because I want to see if they've lowered this lease every 30 days, a hundred bucks, because it could be that we're in the 29th day and we might get another price drop of a hundred bucks on the lease. Um, and then when you go to close and you're back at this page, directly to the right of the clock, those three sheets of paper, generally speaking, when you click on those, there'll be some type of links that the agent has left. But sometimes there's not any, but I always click on it regardless. All right. So now that I have this printed, I need to go ahead and make Muhammad from a customer to a client. And that means that I'm now out of, I'm, I'm out of MLS and I need to get into zip forms. And there's a lot of ways to get into zip forms. So first off, I do this because this is how I, you know, part of my onboarding with you guys. And I'm going to log out so you'll see what it actually looks like. I tell you to go to texasrealestate.com. There's about a dozen ways to get into zip forms. You're going to go over here to log in. And when you hit log in, hopefully all your forms will be, I mean, your, uh, your login information will be pre-filled. And then you hit log in and you'll go right to the same screen again. But this time it's going to say your name. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Doug. Hi, Lola. And to the right, there's going to be a, a zip forms uh, button that's blue. When you click on it, and this is where I always train, we're waiting for the screen to turn blue and hit one tab and one tab only, the new tab. Okay. And so the biggest thing about training is talking while this happens. So um, the screen turns blue. You're going to see a tab that comes up and you're looking for it and there it is in the left corner. When you hit new, five boxes pull up and I only care about the first three, seller, buyer, lease. So I would hit it and I'm gonna go ahead and name it whoever my um, buyer, or my tenant is. And then I always like to select residential no matter what. And then right here it says select template. There's only three choices. It's pretty basic. You're going to pick the tenant landlord one. And then you just scroll down and you're going to see save. When you see save, the next screen, you'll be looking at a white summary square. And just for simple purposes, if you go two tabs to the right and hit documents, 
this is where you're going to have all your forms. So I do need to send the IBS to him. And when I open it and scroll down, it's completely filled in. I hit the back button in order to make him a client. I need to buy a rep. When I click on it, I'm going to fill in two paragraphs and that's it. Paragraph one. I'm going to put in the name of the buyer or the tenant. I don't worry about the address. I, that's all I do. I scroll down. Most likely you're going to have either DFW in the state of Texas, or if you're, you know, we're in the whole state agents. I've done their templates in Houston says Houston and surrounding areas. Uh, all you're going to do is click on this first blank in paragraph four. I'm going to meet them tonight at six and I'm going to go to the second blank and I'm going to go probably a month out because it's a tenant and I'm going to pick the 29th. I'm going to hit save. The rest of this form is done. So I'm going to scroll down to show you, but I've already got intermediary marked. I've already got your commission as three or 50 percent of the first month's rent. I uh, have either party can terminate and then you're filled in down here. Now, let me address this real quick. Now, we already know that this lease is paying how much? 25. But I can see there that I'm asking for 50. So this is where it's going to be a judgment call on your part. When I send it to Laura, she might look at it and go, hey, what is this paragraph 11 about? Like, um, I didn't know I have to pay you anything. I, the whole reason I'm using you is you told me that you were going to get paid by the landlord. Well, I probably will go in and change that and delete it. And that means that either I'm going to do this or I'm just going to delete the whole paragraph. And the reason I say that, and let me explain, is because she ain't going to work with you if you keep the 50% in there. And if you say, well, my commission's 50%, I'm getting 25 from the landlord. I want you to pay me 25. She could say yes, but most likely she's going to say, that's all right, I'll pass. Um, and now you have to do some economics in your own life and go, is she worth $450 to have her? She's you know, young, average buyer and, and tenant moves every, you know, well, on a tenant, she's going to be moving almost yearly. Um, but every every buyer moves every five to seven years. So that means that over the course of a 30 or like in Daniel's case, he could be licensed for 70 years. He's 18 years old. I mean, you're talking about somebody that she is. a She's like a, a, a payout on an annuity, you know, on a regular basis if she pours into him. Um, or he pours into her. So anyways, that's why I'm saying that by default, if you were hung over, it's going to say three and 50. Question. Yeah. Can I put for MLS there? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the MLS in, in our area dictates your commission. So you're, yeah, I mean, this is just templated in case you're hung over and you just forget how to fill it out. You really only have to fill in two paragraphs, but yeah, you can make it blank. Um, because there's a lot of buyers that won't want that in there. I'll be straight up. And um, and I was telling you, and I mean, I've said this in my class I taught, um, it's about two months ago. I had a guy named Nevin Talley that called me uh, on a Wednesday. And uh, he said, I just got off the phone with another agent. It's between you and her. I'm coming in from San Diego Saturday. I want to look at some builders. You're helping a buyer friend of mine right now. And he recommended you. I want to look at a builder in his subdivision, but I'm probably leaning towards you because the agent I just got off the phone with says she won't even meet me unless I sign a buyer rep right now. And she, he goes, I've never even met her. And he, I go, well, what's your take on a buyer rep? Because it's always good to like ask the person, like, well, what, what do you believe on a buyer rep? And he goes, well, my dad's been a realtor in LA for 60 years and he's never had anybody sign a buyer rep. And he said, son, don't sign a buyer rep. If, uh, if they won't work with you, they don't work with them, but you'll find somebody that, that will. And so I told him that it would be, in his best interest to sign a buyer rep, but that it's America. And I, I've said that my whole life. I go, it's America. I'll meet you this weekend. I'm going to re reiterate that you should sign it because it protects you against me more than it protects me against you. But at the end of the day, if you decline to sign it a few times and I keep a copy of those records, I'll be happy to represent you. And I met him and he went under contract and it was not an issue. He fell in love with me um, and, his, and his girlfriend. And we were actually in a builder and the on the on-site rep was from California. And I mentioned the thing about the backyard and did this. And she said in front of them, I wish my realtor would have told me that five years ago when I moved here because our backyard faces due west and it's friggin' brutal in the summer. So you got to use common sense knowing that people are going to go ahead, Lola. Yeah. 
I'm going to add something that may that's going to be easier for you. Um, I just learned this in my brokerage class, and I also learned it in my GRI class. Um, if that buyer's rep is not not signed by default, you represent the seller. So legally, you can't really give any information to a customer or a potential client about that house. Sure. So you can go show them a lease, but if they say, "Hey, what do you, does this work?" Like you're really not supposed to say anything because you represent the landlord or it's a sub agency, right? So <clears throat> that's a good way to explain to him, like, "Hey, look, I really want to help you. I really want to advocate for you, but..." If you don't sign this, I represent the seller and legally I'm not supposed to give you any information because we have access to everything about the seller, you know, so we can make it good for the buyer or bad. But when you sign that buyer's rep, it's all for the good for that client. So just keep that in mind. Absolutely. Yep. And that, that's a good way to, to approach it. Um, and you can say just what she said also, you know, the goal is in Texas to always be a client. And when you don't sign it, you're a customer. And it's like, I always say like dating, it's like we're dating, you know, I should be honest with you and fair, but I don't owe you nothing. Right. And you, you want to be the wife or the husband or the spouse. And there's a fidelity involved. All right. So now let's say that um, now I want to probably docu sign it or some form electronically. I want to send it to Laura. So we've already got the IBS. I didn't really have to open it. That was pre-filled. The buyer rep, we opened it. We filled in two paragraphs. So either one of them, I'm going to open. And when I open it, I'm just going to hit E sign in the left corner. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And really you don't have to do much here by default. This digital link 2.0 is pretty good. Um, all you're going to do is select this little link that says select documents to include. And if you scroll down, it's got every form that's there. And all you're going to do is check mark the IBS and hit close. And then you just verify that those are your forms and you just hit next. It's pretty basic. You just follow forward. Um, let's say that it's Laura by herself. I'm going to check mark her name and watch it won't let me. And when it won't let me, it tells you what I need to do in order to be able to check mark it. So if I just type in an email, then it will let me check mark her. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool because when I'm on the phone with you, I'll say, go ahead and check mark the person. And you'll go, oh, it won't let me. And I go, I know it won't let you, but it'll tell you why it won't let you. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that, that it says it you know, needs to be filled in, then you go back and check mark it. Um, then you hit close and there she is right there and you just hit next. And when you hit, uh -huh. if you put the client's email address in the buyer's rep, you won't have to fill in that box. The reason oh, why okay. that box is empty is because you didn't put an email address. I just put the name? Yeah. You Perfect. I didn't know that. Address. Yeah. So that's good to know. Um, yeah. If you leave out the phone number and email, then the only thing that will populate is their name. Laura. All right. Good. Good to know. I'll do that from now on. All right. So here we are at the form. And again, um, back when you fill it out, go ahead and put the buyer's email there. Uh, and then you just hit next and send, and it just went off to them. And then you're going to follow up. Hey, Laura, I just want to let you know, I sent you some forms. It just kind of formalized. I'm going to be your advocate that I'm going to be in the trenches with you. Oh, okay. I got it. What do I do? I just open it. It'll kind of walk you through initially. If you'll text me when you've signed, then I'll get it back. And, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is send you a TAR application to fill in. And I'll text you when I sent that. So what you'll do is you'll go back into zip forms and you'll hit the back button and you'll get back to your forms and you just got to kind of scroll around all the forms that you possibly need are right here for both a tenant and a landlord. And you're looking for a lease application. So you just kind of go left to right. And as you keep looking, you're going to see right here that it says lease application. And when you open it, and again, this is just me and I am going to just to make it simple, you're going to send this as a PDF. What I would do is actually send this to yourself and keep it on your phone because you can just send it always to a tenant and get them to start filling it out on their own. But right here, you're going to hit send email and two screens pop up. And you're going to red X out of the first screen. And on the only screen left, you're going to type in Laura's email. And in the subject line, I just like to put print. Fill out and scan back to me as a PDF. You're going to hit send and it's going to ask you what you're going to send it through and you're going to pick your Gmail or whatever your account is. And once you pick it, it's about to say it's been sent successfully. Now, you then need to text the tenant back and make sure they got it. It didn't go to junk or spam. They're going to print it, fill it out, scan it back to you. 
you're going to forward it to the listing agent whose name is on the second page of the um of the agent full report and um and then recently i've seen more landlord agents not want the app fee until they've accepted the client but in you know fast about five years ago they wanted the app fee with the application so you just want to ask like hey did you want the app fee now or do you want it later and if they want it now then ask them is there an alternate way other than driving over with a check i mean there's some old geezers in real estate that are like 90 and i mean last week an agent was it you you text me and you're like somebody wants an actual physical check for the app fee and like it's always like down in highland park at 4 30 and you're up in yeah, north dallas nice. and you're like are you shitting me like 60 dollar physical check i don't even know if my client has a personal check <laughs> So, so most of the time, yeah, I mean, so most of the time it's going to be something else. Um, all right. So the neat thing about working with a tenant is that almost exclusively the landlord agent's the one that does the lease. So you're really done at this point. And then you wait a couple days and the agent comes back with you with a text usually. And they go, Hey, your client got accepted. I'm going to send the lease over. They'll send the lease over. If you want, you can forward it to me. I'll look it over a second set of eyes. You're going to send it over to your client. And this is the way the checks are generally done. Your commission is based on the first month's rent. So if you're with the tenant, you need to send a W-9 and you need to send something called an agreement between brokers regarding residential leases. And again, here it is right here. And when you open it, I pre-filled it at 50%. And so up here, you're going to change this to 25. And then when you go down here, you're going to be on the left and on the right, you'll actually need to put, you know, KW or, you know, whatever. And, you know, their, their information on this right side, and then you'll send it over to the agent. As far as, um, as far as the W9, this is back agent. All you do is, you know, when you log into back agent, this is your main screen um in just a second you'll see that it's your your kind of your dashboard all you do is go office documents quick links and it's the first one right there that's the w9 for dhs realty all right uh, let me add this person in real quick um all right so that's how you do working with a tenant all right and again i mean you're basically you're basically at this point you're on a cruise control waiting for the agent to get back with you um what I'm going to do on the flip side is uh, real quick for another 10 minutes is what would happen if somebody called you to list a home for lease and we'll use the same address. So the call comes in, it could be an op city or it could be anybody. And uh, basically the way it comes in is uh, your phone rings. You got to pick your phone up. <clears throat> hey, this is Doug with DHS Realty. Hey, my name is um, whatever this name is, I can't pronounce it. Um, I would like you to, I would like you to come out and uh, tell me what my, uh, my home could be worth if I wanted to lease it. And you would go, absolutely. What's the address? Uh, you say, what's the address? And they go one, one, two, one. All right. They go one, one, two, one independence. And I go, Oh, okay. And, uh, are, are you the owner? Yeah, I'm the owner. Uh, is this your cell phone? Yeah, it is. And what's your email? Dave at Dave Wilson.com. All right. Well, cool. What's good for you tonight or tomorrow? And he goes, I don't know. How about tonight at six? And I go, absolutely. Tonight at six will work. Um, well, I'll see you tonight at six. And uh, probably when I get off the phone, I'll send you my business card. It'll have a link to all my social media. And um, and I'll probably confirm with you later this afternoon that we're still on for 6 p.m. And he goes, cool. I'll see you at six. So I get off the phone with him. I pull over. I get out my phone or a laptop. And the easiest way to do a listing presentation anytime is to see if it was ever in the MLS since 2003. So the same thing I would do here is I would go up here and go one, one, two, one, anything with the word I in it to spell independence. <clears throat> it's going to pull up. Obviously we know it. And it's probably going to be one of these down here. Okay. So let's say that it was this one. See there, that's the same property when they bought it. So I would go here and I would click on the MLS number and I would print this. And while I'm here, right up there at the top next to tax, I would click the tax roll and I print that. And then just like I did, I would go in and do a CMA of lease properties in that subdivision. And I'm just doing this for repetitious purposes. So you would know that this is going to be how you do a CMA. You, you know, you can have some 
some alterations from this, but this is like a foundation for everybody. Uh, and that's how you do a CMA is you're going to change this to go back six months. Now, let's say that nothing came up in the subdivision name. There could be another way to do a CMA, and that could be right here in the middle. You slowly type in the address. And, uh, okay. And once you see independence, uh, it's not that one. So you're going to keep going. E N. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's why. In the pen. Okay. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. And there it is. So I select it. And then over here, you don't have to use what's in the drop down. So let's say that I wanted to do four miles. So I just pull four miles of homes from this address in a radius, and there's 176. That's way too many. But then if I look at this and I have it printed, I can see the square footage is 1388. So I could go over here to square footage, and I usually go 1100 below, uh, three, 200 below, and you know 200 above. <clears throat> so now I just reduced it down to 35. Okay, does that make sense or not? And then I look over here and I see it's a three bedroom, two bath with one living. So I could also go here and go three plus. And I just reduced it down to the same, 35, 30. So now I hit results. And I'm going to get a single line of all the properties. And I'm going to check mark the box above one. And I'm going to hit quick CMA. <clears throat> I've got five more minutes and then we'll introduce some sponsors we have and introduce everybody. So this is the CMA. So I'm going to print that. So when I go to the listing, I'm going to have the old MLS. I'm going to have the tax roll and then I'm going to have a CMA. Okay. Um, and so I'm done with MLS, but now I need to get the listing presentation for uh, this, for the landlord. And the difference between working with a landlord seller and a buyer tenant is a buyer tenant. We use DocuSign but a landlord seller, I would recommend that we print because part of closing is at the house. All right. So we already know how we log in and we know that we're going to, we know that it's going to say, hi, your name. You're going to hit zip forms and the screen turns blue. So now we're doing a listing presentation for lease. Once the screen turns blue, it's the same protocol. You're going to hit the new tab. And you should know that when you hit the new tab, that five boxes pull up and after the five boxes pull up that we're going to still hit the third box. And let's say that the landlord's name is Dave. And we're going to select the dot next to residential. And down here, the template will either say landlord or it'll be the same template for both. You'll hit save and you'll be at that white summary square. And you're going to go two tabs over to documents and there's all your forms again. Is everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right, we're almost done. Three more minutes. We already know we need to print this. So we're going to open the IBS and we're just going to hit print. It's already pre-filled for everybody in the company. Neat thing about it is on this, you only need two forms. It's going to be one. To, it's going to be the IBS and the exclusive right to lease. So you're going to go down here and you're going to look for it and you see it. You'll click on it. And when it opens, it's basically pre-filled. So again, I'm going to go kind of quick here, but I like all caps. So Dave Wilson is the seller. Um, I'm going to go down here and I'm looking at the tax roll and it says that it's uh, lot 13, block B, Trailwood, uh, the city of Grand Prairie, county is Dallas, and then the address is 1121 Independence. Okay, I'm not going to spell it out, but you get the point. Then I'm going to go down. I'm going to leave everything else blank. I'm going to pick the date today because I'm meeting them in the evening. And then I usually do listings about three or four months. It's, it, we have no policy on it. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. I am going to pick the same day. So there's some conformity. And then I'm going to go down here. And you can see there that I have already pre-filled that 100% of the first month's rent is the commission. And again, this is where you're going to have a conversation with Dave because he might go, well, my buddy, he uh, he got his home lease with uh, ABC Realty. And he told me they only did 80% of the first month's rent. And that's when you go, well, that's fine. We can do that. But again, if you in your mind know you're going to lose the first month's rent, I would recommend that we do 50-50 because that's going to bring 
the most tenants the quickest um, because an agent that's representing a tenant, they might even have a check in the MLS of properties that are only offering 40 or 50 percent. And uh, and you could be you know, your home could be boycotted. So you do what you want. It's America. But my recommendation is let's just act like we're eating the first month's rent. And that's what you're going to use to pay each party. Now, let's say that Dave said, well, after I lease this home out, I am going to buy a million dollar house next month. And um, I would say, well, shit, I'll just pay 50 percent of the first month's rent to the tenant agent. I'll do this for free. But that's yeah. condition on me being the agent on the buy next month. And he goes, oh, you do that? Yeah, I would. That's a thirty thousand dollar commission on a million dollar house, and you're not going to make a thousand bucks on this one. Um, I mean, that's just that's called common sense. Um, does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So this is not like a policy in our company. This is just what I've templated. Um, so you really don't have to touch any of this. It's all pre-filled, okay? Which means that all you're going to do is hit save, and you're going to print it, and now you have your listing presentation. This is kind of cool because it's so generic that you can use this as well. And that's your packet. And then you have the agent full report and then you have the tax roll and then you have a CMA and then you have the IBS and then you have the exclusive right to lease. And that my friend is your package. If you want, it can always be better and more sophisticated. It's worked for me for 32 years. And you know, when I go on a listing, most people are, not really buying this as much as they're buying your personality. They're buying a uh, rapport. They are buying that you're playing with their dog on the listing. Um, if they have a gerbil, play with the gerbil, but not like Richard Gere. Um, you know, there's all kinds. I'm joking. Only a couple of people got it anyway. So anyways. So, um, but anyways, I mean, you really, you're what you're trying to do is establish. A, all right, bring it back in. What you're trying to do is establish a rapport. And, and I always say this, and you know, my dad and I, we used to work together and uh, we would go on a listing and I mean, he had an age difference. So he would ha have a rapport with older clients. I'd have rapport with younger. Um, we both love dogs and animals. And, um, you know, I had kids at the time almost my whole life. So um, I'm, I'm fine with kids. If the seller had kids, I would, you know, play with them, not in a Michael Jackson way, but uh, I'm joking as well. Just trying to keep it live. So uh, anyways, and then basically, I'm joking. I love Michael. Uh, went to his concert when I was little. So, um, but anyways, at the end of the day, that's what they're buying. And uh, and and if you see body language, like you know, when you're done with this presentation, I always go, "What do you think, Dave?" And I mean, if he goes like that, I mean, and, and he has he's married to Hillary, and if Hillary goes, then that's a winner. That means, hey, grab a spare key. I'll go get my sign and key box. And uh, uh, it would suck if he goes, "Well, I'm ready. Let's do it right now." And you're like, oh, well, shit, I don't have my sign or key box. Like, I'm, I'm kind of a neophyte. I didn't know, you know, that you wanted to move forward. I mean, you always got to be ready. And so what I always recommend is you, you have these little, it's, it's not like Zig Ziglar closes. It's not like, what would it take for you to make a decision today? It's where as you're going through this, you start looking at the body language. And when I see like Ali going like this, then I'm like, well, are you good? Yes. All right. Well, cool. I'm going to go grab my sign and key box. I just need you to find a spare key. And then you get up and start walking out to your car and he's not going to stop you. And if he does, then that's fine. But most of the sellers just want to be told what to do. Most people in life want to be just told what to do. Kind of. And, and so um, and so you get the sign, you get the key, you get the key box on. And one thing that I'm a big a fan about and we're kind of done with the training. But one thing that I'm a really big fan about is. Um, is the key box you put on a door, even for lease, should be electronic Supra. Yeah. And if you have to, I'll buy it. Um, and I'm about to go buy about 10 of them later today, and I'll have them at my house for people to borrow. But just think about it. Law says that a vacant home for lease can have a combo on it. And, and, and a lot of agents put combos on vacant lease properties because it's a combo is what, 10 bucks at Home Depot? Of course, the code is 0000. And most agents are too stupid to go change it. So now you put a zero, 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 zero combo on a vacant home that somebody could open it, light a match, throw it in, close the door, and you just had a whole house burned down. So no loss of life, but still that's going to come back on the brokerage and it's going to come back on you. Um, so I would recommend a Supra. And I think that's a selling point for you that you go, hey, my brokerage and me, however that grammar is, um, we strongly believe in safety. And so we are adamant that we use electronic key box. Now, are you interviewing other brokers? Oh yeah, I've got a couple tomorrow. 
well, I would just, you know, demand nothing less than electronic com uh, electronic uh, device on your front door, because we're in a time where, you know, people are needing drugs and money. And, you know, um, let's say that Dave had a hip replacement. He got oxy as a prescription. Um, he probably took half a pill the first day. And then he said, yeah, I don't even need that. And so he put all those unused bills up in his medicine cabinet. And there are actually people that go into houses acting like they're sellers and buyers and tenants and landlords specifically to go into a medicine cabinet to look for uh, narcotics and opiates. So that's where you talk about safety and knowing that with that electronic key box, every time somebody opens it, Dave's going to get a text saying who went in and when they put that key back in, when they left. And so it's a accountability uh, for safety. Um, also, if your clients are still in the house and they're, they're, you know, they're vacating for people to come look at it, uh, whenever they come back, tell them to check all the windows, make sure that they're locked because people will unlock a window in order to come back later and break in. Uh, so seriously, just, you know, inform your